Henry Burris TV is brought to you by Hockey Central Sports Memorabilia, Sylvan Lake. And Supreme Menswear, simply the best. The playoffs are sure going to be something interesting this year. I mean, right now, uh, it's a battle between you, the BC Lions, and the Edmonton Eskimos. Anything can happen, last man standing. Uh, then we've got the East. I mean, uh, for the first time, there's not going to be a crossover in a long, long time. Mm. Uh, and they, in their own right, have their own uh, little playoff battles going on. And it's tough to decide who's going to be the team to beat out of there. Right now, it looks like uh, Montreal's gaining momentum. And once again, Anthony Cavillo and the guys are going to be tough to beat. So what I want to do is talk to you about the West, because you don't know if you're going to be first, second, or third. Mm -hmm. That Western semifinal is going to be a beautiful matchup, no matter who's in. So let's just yeah. kind of look at it, presuming uh, you have to play one of those two teams, and compare playing the Eskimos to the BC Lions. Uh, who would you rather play? Really, it doesn't matter. Uh, number one, because both teams present so many problems. I mean, especially on defense. I mean, uh, both teams present two of the top sack leaders up front. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't matter. Those guys get after the ball, regardless if it's versus the run or the pass. They have lots of great young, talented players, lots of speed on both sides. But also, they have that veteran leadership that needs to be there definitely where it's needed as far as guys who can get guys in the right spot. They both have great coaching as far as uh, in their coaching staff. So, Mike Benavidez out in uh, BC, he's really learned a lot as far as uh, you know working behind some great people, great knowledgeable people as far as in the game with a lot of experience. I mean, he learned a lot from Rich Stubler, who was with BC for a couple of seasons, along with Wally Bono. But of course, when Coach Stubler moved on to the Edmonton Eskimos, he really changed that team's defense, changed the whole mental psyche. They brought in a whole new, uh, you know, as far as number of new players on that defense, fast, intelligent, knowledgeable players who can really get the job done. Both defenses have been playing very well. I mean, really doing a great job of stopping the run. And like I said, both both teams present two of the top pass rushers as far as sack-wise, you know, in the league, which is never a good thing for guys like myself. When you play, uh, the last time you played BC in BC plays and you lost in that overtime game, uh, you managed the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see you slinging the ball like you normally do. You managed it, you ran it, you, you guys controlled it. Uh, your thoughts on that as opposed to having a little more freedom to go downfield? Well, of course, you know, as a guy who's been in the game for a long time and, you know, especially when you play uh, in the biggest game of the year as far as in your mind that, you know, controls your future because, uh, you know, if we were able to get that victory, that would put us up two games, you know, relatively yeah. on the BC Lions with the tiebreakers. So, you know, in that situation, of course, you know, as a guy who's been in the lead, the reigning MOP, you want the ball in your hands. Uh, but, of course, if that wasn't the case, you know, as far as the way the coaches wanted to approach it, and I had to settle in as far as to do what they told me because a lot of times you don't want to get lost up in the shuffle. You know, you don't want to get lost in the game. But whenever you get your opportunity to make plays for your team, you make sure you take full advantage of that. And that's what I did. But of course, at the end of the day, I definitely wanted to, you know, touch the ball at least 30 times and have an opportunity to dish it off to the guys because we were having success. I mean, we finished with a 80 something percent passing uh, percentage in the game and, you know, we we're able to put a, a big touchdown on the board right after halftime, which really got us back in the game, tied things up. And you wanted to be able to help continually control the flow of the game because that's what I'm used to but uh, you know not getting the opportunity was disappointing but again when you have the rest of the season be able to do that and control your your playoff uh, your chances uh, I'm looking forward to that and that's why I'm excited about the playoffs upcoming and uh, I know I'm going to get my opportunity and I'm going to make my presence felt then. Last year you won the the West in a walk you basically had games that meant nothing throughout the uh, the last half of the year, basically. <laughs> basically. Now, this year, you've got four games to play. Uh, anything can happen, but uh, tell me about the difference between last year's scenario and mm -hmm. this year's where you have to win. I love the scenario this year because it doesn't allow us to relax, like you said. I yeah. mean, at this point last year, we were relaxing. We were cruising to the playoffs. I mean, we were probably one-to-one uh, -one odds to win the Grey Cup. Everybody had us uh, penciled in as the 2010 Grey Cup champions already. Uh, but the bottom line is we still had to go out and do it. Uh, everybody was gunning for this team and we knew it. Uh, now we're kind of sneaking our way in there. I mean, who knows? People don't expect Calgary to win it. People are looking at Montreal, you know, Winnipeg, uh, BC and Edmonton as like the top dogs right now. And so, you know, we're one of those teams that, yeah, we haven't played our best ball over the last month and a half or so, 
but we can weasel our way. Once you get in the dance, anything can happen. And that's why we, I'm making sure that I've been meeting with our guys, putting in the extra work to make sure that we can peak at the right time, which is right now learn from our mistakes because we're still in the battle right now to make sure we can hopefully get a number two or number three CD, at least get one playoff game here in Calgary. Because who knows what can happen? But the thing you can't control as far as that happens is to make sure that you're playing your best football you know, when the lights come on in November. If you could change one thing on your offense right now that you're not doing in your mind properly, what would that be? To me, consistency. Uh, to me, that's the number one thing I always talk about offense. Uh, to me, under consistency brings mental toughness. And uh, if our, our guys have to be tougher mentally. Uh, and for that, you know, whatever defense we see, which, you know, you're going to see new defenses and guys are going to react in different ways. But you got to believe in what you do and go out there and do what you were taught to do. And uh, to me, we continually do that consistently with the talent that we have and the abilities that everybody knows that we that we have as far as on our team the potential. You know, we can be deadly, and uh, that's what I've been stressing our guys each and every day to make sure you come out on that field, regardless if it's practice or in a game, to make sure you're mentally sharp, you know your assignments, and you don't have to think because when you think you're in a play, that's when mistakes usually happen, and we've had too much of that up to this point. It's interesting to see in the CFL, especially with what you guys uh, have on your roster with Taylor. Uh, I mean, not so much early, but in the last little while, especially in that BC game, mm -hmm. he can electrify the crowd. Oh, uh, could have put your head if there wasn't a penalty. By the way, what's with you guys in the penalties? I mean, that, <laughs> that's, that's unfortunate, but yeah. hopefully that changes. But what the point I'm getting is you got you got some pretty exciting elements in all aspects of the game, don't you? Oh, it's exciting to finally see our you know return game come around as far as with Larry, because uh, that's what the investment was, to get a guy in here who could change field position. And he did just that versus BC. Yeah. And that's something we're definitely looking forward to. He's starting to get into his groove. And he told me before the game that, Hank, I'm going to break one this game. Watch me. He was popping his collar. He's like, I'm going to break one. Hank, watch me, baby. <laughs> and But he's such a team player, such a great guy. He's paid his dues. Uh, he stayed patient. I mean, he could have you know, bitched, whined, and moaned about not getting the proper blocking or schemes and stuff like that. But he stayed silent. He continued to work hard with the guys and everything. But like you say, though, regardless of the big plays, our Achilles heel has been penalties. Yeah. And Huff has stressed that point to our guys. We have to cut out the penalties. We're the most penalized team in the league right now. And if just like last year that continues, we'll be the first team going home. And that's something we want to avoid. Finally, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we are talking about Paul McCallum. And uh, you guys, uh, a few years back, was it 2006? Four, two thousand four. He missed the seventeen yarder, <laughs> or oh, it was a chip man. shot that would have sent the BC Lions packing, and yeah. you guys uh, on your way and in, into the Grey Cup. Uh, yeah. Having said that, he was on a roll, uh, makes the game-winning fifty-three-yard field goal, walking off the sidelines. You see former <laughs> rider general manager Roy Shivers. You got to tell me that exchange. That's <laughs> hilarious. Well, of course, you know, I, you know, I have to pay all my respects to Roy. He he brought me into this league and. He worked me out, gave me the opportunity to play football, you know, here in the CFL, continue my professional career. And, and uh, you know, I had to go tell him, hey, you know, hopefully we'll see you here in a couple of weeks. And, of course, in my heart, you know, my mind, just as any other guy would feel, you know, we're going to see you here in a few weeks and it's going to be on then. And he's like, well, he's like, if Paul would have made the kick in Saskatchewan, we all would have been still had a job out there. So, you know, to hear him say that type of stuff is typical Roy. Uh, you know, him and Paul have no love loss. I'm pretty sure they're having a couple of pops together every now and then. But, uh, you know, it was good to see Paul, you know, doing a great job. Not, not, against, your not against us. <laughs> not against us, of course. Yeah. But uh, he's a good friend. It was good to see him have success, just not against us. But, uh, I mean, he's a heck of a kicker. The most consistent guy out there on the planet right now, kicking the football. And, uh, you know, when he lined up, I was hoping maybe he could miss one more. But he didn't, and that's unfortunate for us. But, uh, you know, kudos to him. Yeah.